If you like the sounds and smells of a washing machine, then this could be the venue for you. In this video, you find me fishing the Procter & Gamble stretch of the Thames Estuary. This is a record of three sessions in May and June. Rather than fishing in front of the works, I decided to see what I could catch fishing the structures. The water is deeper closer in, so you can fish a bit more of the tide than you can elsewhere. However, I still only expect to catch close to the top of the tide as the tide turns and just as it starts to ebb. In this first session, I'm fishing the right hand part of a jetty and out goes a free hook clip down rig. I'm not targeting anything in particular, but like most structures on the Thames, you're more likely to catch eels and bass than say flounders and soles, but you never know. My second rig is a free hook boom rig and I'm casting this further up tide. Both have been cast at reasonable distance but not right up to the structure. Structures like this are a magnet for debris and although they are a holding area for fish I don't really want to get snagged up too often. Later on as I feel my way in I will be casting closer to the supports of a jetty. The tide does pull quite hard here, both on the flood and on the ebb, and as I settle down away to my first bite, I run through the locational details. If you've seen any of my other attempts at estuary videos, you'll be familiar with this map. I'm first identifying the venues downstream of Dartford Crossing on the south side, and then those on the north bank before homing in on the West Farrick area. This is an area of industrial estates, including the retail park and shopping centre of Lakeside. Opposite, you have the venues of Green Hive and the Swanscombe Peninsula. Procter and Gamble stretch is between Grays Wharf and Stone Nest Point. To access this area, you drive along Stone Nest Road, then Headley Avenue, and following the signs for St Clement's Church. You park near the church and then follow St Clement's Walk until you get to the riverside. There are plenty of marks you can fish, and I've identified the ones in this video in sequence. The area is also a magnet for graffiti artists and the wall behind is plastered with their work. My work for today is trying to eke out something using both lugworm and ragworm baits. I'm using my familiar setup with continental rods and 30 pound braid. I wouldn't want to go any lighter because of the snags and it's also likely to be rafts of weed coming through it at some stage. My rigs are also familiar with a clip down version having size 2 Aberdeens and the boom rig having size 3 Nordic bend hooks. It's a little bit uncomfortable perched on the side of this river bank, however I am getting little indications straight away. First on the left rod, then a slightly better knock on the right, which is worth striking into. And it feels as if I'm into something. not that surprised to find it's an eel and it put up quite a decent scrap. When there's a really strong tidal pull, I think it's better to bring in both rods before recasting rather than have one out there. You want to try and avoid the build up of rubbish on the line and of course you never know about the crab activity. Your baits could be stripped off quite quickly if you leave it out there for too long. Let's if wires are essential except maybe right on the turn of the tide when there's less of a pull.
a little bit of that annoying weed that clings onto your line just by a lead or not that needs to be plucked off. I haven't got much ragworm with me, so I'm just using that for the top snud. The other two snuds have got logworm, and at the moment the same thing goes for my boom rig. Now trying closer to the jetty support. Since it drops off quite quickly here, it's also worth a few chucks close in. I get my first bite on a boom rig near that jetty support. The bite was more positive than the previous one. I'm not expecting this to be an eel. As expected, it's a reasonable sized scaldy bass. It's very likely hooked in the mouth, so I'm lucky it didn't come off. Whoops, butterfingers. At least the fish fell onto weed and swam off without any problems.
Coming closer to the top of the tide, and I'll get another bite. This feels like a reasonable fish, but unfortunately it snags me. But then I feel it come off. I decided to change the clip down rig over to another boom rig. Here's another bite close to that jetty support. Unfortunately, there's another fish that's come off, but didn't feel that big. It's a bit of a quiet period at the top of the tide, but then the bites pick up since it starts to ebb. Another scaldy bass, but not very big this time.
Then immediately on recasting, I get the same telltale knocks as before. And another tiddler bus comes in. Fish are tied down for an hour or so, missed a couple more bites and lost a couple more fish. So I ended up with just those three bass and one eel, but frustratingly I should have had more. Six days later I was back, but this time to fish the other end of the jetty, closer to Procter & Gamble itself. The heavens opened up just as I arrived and I was given it second thoughts. I got here an hour and a half before the top of the tide should really have set up on the top of a wall. It was racing through and floating weed was a problem which I didn't have before. My other problem is that I didn't have any ragworm with me either so the only bait I had to use was south end dug lugworm. Floating weed was putting my rigs out of position and that horrible weed that gets stuck on your line was also an issue. A lot of time was wasted putting the weed off the line and I was fishing with just one rod for a lot of the time. Tide was now swamping the area where I was sat, so I had to move up the bank. This is where I should have been at the start, but at least it stopped raining.
fished there for a while, but didn't get any bites, so on the turn of the tide, I moved to the other side of the jetty. The free hook clip down rig goes out and that's followed by a boom rig close to the jetty itself. Didn't take long for a bite on the boom rig. I a fish on, but unfortunately it gets off two thirds of the way back. After recasting, I miss another bite. I'm determined to catch something, and since I'm still getting indications, I stay till the tide goes down. And that was another little knock which was worth striking into. Only little, but it's scorely it avoids a blank. Immediately on recasting, I get another one, but that was it for the day. So, a little disappointing. If only two little scordy bass. A month later, and it was a bit of a longer walk for the third session. This time I had some crab with me, so I decided to go for a two long snud clip down rig. I selected one which got penalled hooks on the bottom of the snud. These are a 3 0 and a 2 0. Top snood just has a single free over hook. This is how I mount my crabs. Bait elastic is needed to keep the crab in place. You need to ensure that the point of hook is not masked, otherwise that might reduce the number of hookups.
bottom snut is panelled and like to have a semicircle hook at the top. This would be attached to the point of a hook facing the opposite direction to the other one. Before preparing my crab baits, I'd already cast one rod out. That one has a boom rig with lugworm and ragworm as bait. No indication so far, but it is still three quarters of an hour before the top of the tide. I've cast the boom rig well up tide, since I'm expecting to cast my rig with crabs up against the structure which is in front of me. I'm hoping that the crab might pick up a slightly better sized bass than the ones I've caught so far. This is probably my favourite rig for larger bass. And quite a large number of them actually come to the bait on the top snud. However, if I could cast this rig out, floating weed almost pulls my other rod and tripod in. I'm aiming to cast a rig with crab along the left side of this structure and that cast put it exactly where I wanted it.
I'm alternating the distance that I'm casting this boom rig, but I'm keeping it well away from that structure. I'm hoping to pick up a flatfish on it. It's approaching the top of the tide, but hasn't backed up yet, so you can see how strong the tidal pull is here. I'm dragging the rig now and again to ensure it's not stuck into anything when I do get a bite. And there's a drop back on the crab bait. There's something gone, but doesn't feel like a big bass. A greedy eel has swallowed a crab on the top snud. Quick look at the two rigs I'm using before I recast them. Get a bite in a boom rig, but I don't seem to be getting much luck here since the fish comes off again. just doesn't seem to be my day. I fish are tied down and I get a couple more bites on the boom rig. I get another fish on but once again unfortunately it comes off. Quite a frustrating day since I'm convinced one of the fish I've lost was a flatfish. One of the others was an eel that bit me off and I convinced myself that one of the bites I missed was from a sole.
Although that crab bait did catch me that eel, I was a bit disappointed that was my only bite on that. I think I'll wait till the autumn to come back to give that another go. Procter & Gamble can be a pretty good venue, but I didn't seem to get much luck during these sessions.